Hi everybody, today TJ and I are at Hananki Heritage Park and we're looking at more petroglyphs and cliff dwellings. This is actually the sister site to Palatki. It's only a couple miles away from it and around a different mountain bend, but it is really, really worth coming here. We first thought about it last time, last week when we were at Palatki and we saw the sign for coming over here and we didn't have time that day. So we actually circled back around and came here specifically to go to this site today. Oh, you can definitely tell that these uh, these cliff dwellings here are really dug in. These folks really live back in here. There's multiple rooms yeah. where they had, whereas when we were at Palatki, there was only a few. But this area back here has got 10 to 15 different rooms in the main structure over here, which you'll see. Uh, yeah. is a huge room of where the families actually dwelt. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of walls left in the ruins. The main one that we were looking at here is built under the kind of the cliff of, it's like an open exposed Over cave. Overhang, yeah. It's a big, huge overhang, which is really overwhelming. Actually, when I was looking at the cliff dwelling and looked up, I started to get a real dizzy sensation. There's a lot of energy up there. So one of the main differences is that when we parked at Palatki, the parking lot was right there, easy access into. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> and then, and then. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes spirits make you sneeze. Uh. <laughs> but the difference to Palaki, so when you're up at this, up at the dwelling, you come down, back up the other side into the grotto. The grotto is actually water inside of the cave, like a sacred pool. And that is covered with so many petroglyphs and a burning pit for them to prepare their food. So that was all really amazing. Easy to get to, quick up one way down and up the other way. Now with Hananki, what we've realized is that the walk in is a little bit further, but it's very pretty. It's a really nice trail walking in. So you'll enjoy it as you get closer and closer to the mountain. Um, it also has a shaded structure here midway. So if it's a hot summer day, you can duck out of the shade, drink some water, and then continue on. But it really isn't very far. No, it's only about a, about three quarters of a mile from trailhead all the way up to the, the site, the ruins itself. Yeah. This is about maybe a quarter of a mile in. So you can actually take a break. Yeah, and, and not too steep. There's um, on the trailhead, there's Discovery Trail, which goes up around to the left and that makes it a little bit more rocky, a little bit more of a steep climb, but it circles back around to the easy trail. So you can actually get there either way. It doesn't, it just depends on which you prefer. Um, we went both ways and we thought both were beautiful. We actually went up the easy way and came down the discovery trail way just to compare the two. One had more stone steps with large kind of monolithic stones and it was beautiful. It's a little bit slippery in a couple steps, but really easy to do. Petroglyphs have a lot of the Native Americans on horseback and also the animals that are in the area. Um, at first you look at, you think maybe somebody else has drawn those on there, but they're all done in, in deep charcoal. And uh, they are original petroglyphic sites right here. Yeah. So you can definitely see those. I think they said they have some that are etched in also. The, the charcoal is really easy to, to recognize. Right. Then there are some that are in an even lighter color. Mm -hmm. um, at first glance, you might miss them. But if you just stay there and look at the rock, you'll begin to see the more subtle colors of the petroglyphs. I mean, these are ancient. We came a different way this time. We came through Sedona, um, out by Boynton Trail, and we headed out towards the Palatki Hananki Trailhead. So as we drove out, we did. We were on the main road for a bit longer than when we hit the 525 last week, but we did finally hit the dirt road, and that was treacherous driving and Archaea. Many jeeps were passing us, but there's flooded streets. There's rocks. There's bumps. There's twists and turns. Ruts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> we're probably about uh, from the, from the edge of the paved road back here. We are uh, seven point two miles in, 
at this okay. point in time. So. And just a couple miles past Pulaki. And two, yeah, about two and a half miles past. Yeah, so if you go to Pulaki, you really should come here to complete your exploration. Just passing, coming off the Discovery Trail down about maybe an eighth of a mile or so, walking down, all of a sudden I got extremely dizzy and I had to stop. And it started getting a lot of uh, just weird sensations, weird feelings. I had to stop and sit down. For a couple of minutes got back up and i feel great no problem but well we a did a little grounding zone. yeah we did a little grounding so it's really normal if you're a sensitive person if you're an empath that you will detect spiritual energies when you come to a heritage site like this so be prepared for stuff like that if you're sensitive um common feelings will be you know sneezing getting dizzy having different kinds of like disorientation you may even feel some energy on you like cobwebs on the face and you could feel touched as well but if you feel any of those things just know that it's the ancestors reaching out to you and just acknowledging you so acknowledge them back always be respectful we took some time to sit down on some rocks on the way um, out of the park which ground it is to ground to ground our energy um, also give thanks to the ancestor spirits for connecting to us and letting us be here at their home and understand their history a little better. So giving gratitude to the spirits is always a really good way to keep peace when you go into their sacred sites. When TJ said that he was feeling really dizzy, I recognized that he was probably being affected by the spiritual energy. So I also took his hand and um, helped him ground his own energy so he would feel better. Mm -hmm. And that worked. Yeah. An amazing it's such a beautiful area up here yeah if you're coming to sacred sites like this and you don't know how to ground the most simple thing to do is just to sit down on a rock touch a tree come back into yourself bring your energy back inward instead of outward like when you're focusing on a sacred site and connecting with the energies your energy's much larger than you are it's expanded way outside of you and that's where you often will interact with spiritual energies. But if you're trying to come back, come back to center and ground yourself and feel better so that you're all of yourself leaving without the energies or attachments, you can touch a tree, rock, sit on a rock, meditate, ground yourself, bring your energy back to center. Just bring it back in and that's when you just say thank you and release those ties, release the hooks and cords, release any spiritual energies you can set that intention you can even cut your energy you know i teach my students how to cut their energy in front of themselves and how to separate it from them and any energies that exist outside of them any of those techniques will help you ground back into your own energy so that you know when you're going back to your car and when you're traveling home that you're not bringing anybody else with you that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> The spirits that are here need to stay here. They don't need to travel back home with you because they wouldn't like where we live. They like it here. So. That's true. <laughs>